All right, April Fools is over. Time to give my actual thoughts on Stellar Blade because I actually do have conflicting opinions about it because on one hand, you know, I want to side with the gamers, right? You know, I want to support a new IP. I want to support a new studio. I don't really dislike what I'm seeing from the game. It looks like a generic FromSlop clone, but whatever. I would, you know, really appreciate something that does FromSlop but better, right? At the very least, it has a better looking lead. So from that perspective, I do kind of want to like support the game from that metric, right? We It hasn't come out yet. We don't have any real idea of, you know, the quality of the game. And I think the critics are going after it for the wrong reasons, right? Like, oh, she's too attractive. Oh. Like so many people have been like coming out trying to uh, d damage control, like the game journalist backlash towards this. Like they've, they've been bringing up Baldur's Gate 3 and... Uh, Resident Evil 8, you know, bringing up Lady D, like, like, uh, oh, we, we love those sexy female characters, you can't tell us that, like, uh, we hate all sexy female characters, well, you do, though, because, like, Lady D is not attractive, you know, the women in Baldur's Gate 3 are not attractive, right, those, that is the narrative, right, is that you're trying to trick people into thinking unattractive females are actually super duper hot. So something like Stellar Blade, which like you know, you know celebrates the uh, the fe the ideal female form, right? That is uh that is contrary to what the woke uh, are trying to accomplish, which is why it's a major threat to them, right? It's why there uh, there's been so much backlash to this. But like, is the game good though? You know, because like the demo is available, right? You can play it now. You can look at the gameplay, and uh, you know I've been seeing from a lot of streamers, you know, people like Max Dude, uh, who aren't like completely reliable sources of information by any means, but like they are being rather critical of the game. You know, calling it like a seven out of ten kind of thing, right? And the immediate reaction from the community is kind of dismissing this as like, oh, they're just they're just in the pocket of game journals. But like, let's look at this objectively, really, like. Is every single streamer, like, on board with the woke agenda, right? Like, I don't necessarily think that's the case, right? Like, the thing is, I don't necessarily think that Stellar Blade is going to be, like, a, a spectacular game in its own right, right? Yeah, you can like the game for what it is. Nobody's stopping you from doing that, right? But, like, people are, like, obsessively trying to... Uh, paint this narrative that this is going to be a major major ps5 release when in reality i think uh this uh, this entire ordeal is nothing more than like a marketing campaign right i think people are buying into uh this narrative in order to get this game talked about get as many people like playing this game as possible to get as many pre-orders in there like i don't necessarily think this reaction is organic right and i've been saying this like a couple of times like when it comes to these kind of debates about female characters because like when i look back at like uh lady d right like uh just as an example like i felt like that entire thing was like super forced right like oh she's so sexy is she though like you know <laughs> like she's like a vampire or some shit you know i am a i'm a connoisseur of of sexy female vampires right and i can tell you the lady d does not do it for me like at all and i was like i was acknowledging that fact you know when it happened i was just kind of like wait a minute is this actually real or is this like a fake viral marketing campaign by capcom and to this day i'm not entirely sure but but I do think the Razor Fist brought up a really interesting point when it came to like the Hogwarts legacy debacle is that like a lot of marketing firms have become aware that anti-woke has become a thing, right? People are supporting backlash, ba uh, supporting products based on like perceived notions of being anti-woke, right? So I think with like Stellar Blade, what they're trying to do is market the game as being anti-woke because it has like a sexy female lead. Right. Like, I think that's what we're seeing here. And I do think it's very possible, considering this is coming from South Korea, that the game is actually unbelievably paused. Right. Like, I think people are going to be very surprised when they actually get their hands on the game, like the full release and realize just how woke it is. Right. You know, kind of like Nier Automata. Right. Like Nier Automata is super, super woke. 
right? But people really tried to like push this idea that it was like some like based Japanese like like triple A property and like with a sexy female lead. In reality, like no, it was unbelievably degenerate. And it's it's uh, honestly kind of shocking that more people don't don't really talk about that. Like people still have delusion um, delusions that that game was like something spectacular. It is like. It's disgusting to see these kind of like mid products just pushed this way. Like when you compare this to like um, Prince of Speed Showtime, right? You know, where everybody like wrote off this like far superior product. It's it's just like, why is Stellar Blade getting worshipped, but Princess Peach like getting getting disrespected by everyone, right? Uh, it, it really is just a matter of uh, Nintendo exclusivity, right? You know, people are always looking forward, uh, looking for reasons to hate on Nintendo, right? But praise Sony, right? And uh, th that's kind of, that's what we saw with uh, Princess Peach Showtime, right? Like, everybody tried to say that, like, ooh. Like, uh, Stellar Blade's gonna be so much better, but is it, though? Like, I don't think, I, I really do think at this stage, uh, looking at, like, the uh, the discourse, like, I do think this is going to be one of those games that comes out and is, like, immediately forgotten, right? It's going to be this year's, like, Life of P or, like, uh, Pal World or, like, oh, Pal World came out in January. I forgot. Uh, it's going to be like, it's going to be like that, where it's going to be a flash in the pan thing that comes out. People are on board with it for only one reason, and then it's gone again, right? Like, look at what happened to Final Fantasy VII R, right? Uh, Rebirth, right? You know, you had Tifa and Eris. Who, are all, who both look way better than, like, Eve, by the way. I think that's, uh, if you don't think that, you are a homosexual, right? You know, you have Tifa and Eris, you know, being, like, extremely fan y throughout the entire thing. And, like, did that sell more copies? No, right? Like, that's that's kind of my, my thing at this point, is that, like, like, I don't think there's anything that PlayStation can do to, like, bring people back at this point. Right, this is like a last ditch effort from them to try to get the fanboys back on board, right? You know, it's like with Final Fantasy Ten Two all over again. We're all like, uh, we're gonna make a sequel that nobody asked for. Okay, so let's just have Yuna in like these really tight booty shorts right on the front cover, right? You know, that'll sell the copies. And of course, like it didn't, but like, you know, that game is hated by everyone and for good reason. But like I think I think more people need to, like, um, understand that this kind of pandering and marketing tactics is really cheap, right? Like, it doesn't represent, like, an actual high-quality product at all. The fact that, like, all anybody seems to care about are, like, cheeks says a lot about the quality of the actual product. Someone like Princess Peach has a lot more class.